So how are you enjoying the French experience so far? Well, I'll be straight with you, it's been incredibly intense. We start work at half seven in the morning some days and we're still working at nine o'clock at night. You get the odd experience of, you know, walking down uh, in the promenade like yeah, this, yeah. but most of the time you're working hard. So how's your French going? Do you, do you have to speak in French or is there a <laughs> kind of a coaching code? I taught the rugby chat in French uh, as much as possible. If I have to, you know, have sort of a long conversation. Long conversation for me is like 15 words or something. In English? But, <laughs> well, yeah, I said to the guys when I come here, I said, I said when I coach in, uh, in English, I only said three or four words. So I'll watch it. Yeah. What was the driving force on taking this job? Oh, a guaranteed four and a half year deal. Most of the offers I had were pretty, uh, pretty similar. Uh, but I've got two little girls to look after and, and a son who's still at university, so... Yeah, I've got my responsibilities and I, I, I need to provide for them. Do they know you? When you came here, do people say, oh, this is Sean Edwards, this is a superstar of rugby? Did, did, did they know you when you got here? I don't know, I can't tell what they're saying. Right. <laughs> still a, a very, very young man, but you seem to have got a very old head on the shoulders now. I suppose I've, I've had a lot of experience for someone who's only 18. I just hope it keeps on going until I finish my career. And there's Edwards going away! Edwards is through! Straight down the middle! You are a Wigan boy, born and bred. What does it mean to you to be leading your hometown team out to the final? It will not mean anything unless we lose. It won't mean anything at all to me. But if we win, I'll be very pleased. You've had expectation on you as a, a player and as a coach since you were 16, haven't you? I mean, you signed at Wigan as a 16-year-old. Yeah, I mean, at, at the time when, when I signed, Wigan um, were mid-table. I had offers from Widnes, who were, who were the best team at the time. I remember my dad wrote me a little bit of a letter sort of thing and said, uh, you know, you have to make a decision. Do you, if you play at Wembley, do you want to play in front of 35,000 Wiganers or in front of 15,000 Widnesians? And uh, that sort of got me. 20 years for this. That's no uh, disrespect to Wydnesians, by the way. <laughs> but you, you, you had been to Wembley a lot of the time. Yeah. The game for me that stands out, which, which sums you up in terms of attitude, 1990 Challenge Cup final, when you got your face smashed in after about 13 minutes, and I you carried it, on. It was eight minutes, actually. Was it eight minutes? Yeah, uh, yeah I carried on. Uh, I broke my eye socket in three places. But even so, I mean, that takes a certain mental mental toughness. Well, it? I couldn't see, really. That was, that was the worst bit at first. And, and Dean Bell, he helped me a lot. Um, the fact that he was very harsh on me, because I didn't really do much after the initial injury. And he, and he just said to me, if you're not going to do anything, get off the something pitch. So. That was what I needed. I didn't need sympathy, I needed harshness. But to be honest, one of the big things that kept me going in that game was the fact that I was playing against Warrington, which was my dad's old team. And my dad had been very unfortunate. I think he'd lost in two semi-finals. So going into the game, I was so determined to make my dad proud of me because he'd never been lucky enough to play at Wembley. Edwards, a magnificent tackle, but Preston's in! My goal was always to make my mum and dad proud of me. That was it, simple. You were an instinctive player, is that fair? You, you no, I would disagree choice. with that. No? Um, I was a, a player who studied a lot. He, he looked at a lot of tape, uh, which I think has definitely helped me when I'm going into my coaching career. Was it inevitable that you were going to be a coach? I was writing notes from being about 20, 21 of the various different you know, tactics, etc. Most of them were in rugby league at first. But I remember my mum, when, when about 1995, and she said that you must study rugby union now as well because, you know, obviously rugby union had gone professional. So she saw that opportunity, the way things were going. Uh, she's very proud, my mother. Yeah. You made a name as a try scorer. Now you're making a name as a defensive coach. Is that a passion, defence? Um, it's an attitude, isn't it, defence? Um, one of my proudest things is that I don't know if I've still got the record, but I've got the record number of tackles for a scrum half in the test match. But what you've got to remember is I've been organising defences from being 16. Defence early seat! Sam, Sam Fraser, go! Have you seen areas instantly before you took this job? Have you seen areas where you think, I can improve them? And can you let us know what those areas might be? Uh, yeah, and no. Right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> is that simple enough for yes, you? Yes, it is, yeah. 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 Come on, sir. Go. Go. What I've um, seen from this French team at the moment is that they've got an immense amount of speed. Some of the forwards are nearly as fast as backs. They train for a long time. 
Yeah, they've trained for a long time yesterday. The aim was to go to 125% um, of what they do in the game. Some of the back three guys, i.e. fullbacks, wingers, they covered 10 kilometres yesterday. Yeah. And in a game, generally they covered seven or eight. At the end of this four and a half years, what would you hope to have achieved as part of this French setup? Um, we want to be a serious team. We'd obviously like to be in the top four, like England have been for the last number of years. Unbox her, unbox her, okay. 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 Your back straight. Okay. Can you make an impact in this Six Nations or is it more of a long-term project? Well, you know, we're not into competitions just to make the numbers up.